Welcome back. And in our sports news over in Wimbledon, fifth seed Maria Sharapova powered into the semi-finals after beating Slovak Dominica Sibylkova in a 6-1, 6-1 demolition on Tuesday. The Russian broke three times in the first set under the centre court roof as she dominated Sibylkova from the baseline. Having not dropped a set all tournament, the Russian looks the hot favourite to seal her fourth Grand Slam title. Yeah, I, I certainly feel like I, I've improved, um, especially from my second round, and um, I think that's that's really important if you want to get to the later stages and um, the later stage of the second week as well. Uh. Sabine Lissicki continued her heartwarming run at this year's Wimbledon when she beat Marion Bartoli 6-4, 6-7, 6 to become the first German, German woman to reach the semi-finals since 1999. I was in the quarters once here, two years ago. I didn't make it further and um, it just feels amazing to be in the semi-finals, especially after all I went through and... Um, I think it's also great for the German tennis. And left-hander Petra Vitova reached the Wimbledon semi-finals for the second year in a row with a 6-3, 6-7, 6-2 win over Bulgaria's Svetsana Prinkova. While fourth seed Victoria Azarenka of Belarus overpowered Austrian Tamira Pazek 6-3, 6-1 to set up a last four clash against Kvitova. And in our golfing news, Tiger Woods, who skipped this month's U.S. Open with leg injuries, said on Tuesday that he was not sure whether, he'd be, whether he would be ready to play in the July British Open. The 14 times major winner has not played since pulling out of the Players' Championship on May the 12th after playing nine holes. At a news conference, he stated that he is not setting up a timetable for his return to golf due to injuries. I'm just going to learn my lesson what I did at the players and uh, and apply it this time and uh, come back when I'm 100%. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be. That's kind of the frustrating thing about it right now is I, I don't know. I am getting stronger, um, starting to get more explosive again and uh, then eventually start, start practicing and playing again and uh, ultimately come out here and, and play against these guys. And in football, Brazil is warming up to face Venezuela in their opening match of the Copa America on July, July the 3rd. Already in Argentina on Tuesday to prepare for their match in La Plata, the South American Giants are looking to defend the title they won in 2007. It will be coach Mano Menezes' first competition at the head of the team, and players said they are not expecting an easy run, but it is Argentina that they are already thinking about. Meanwhile, eight Mexico players in the country's Copa America squad were suspended on Tuesday for six months for indiscipline by the National Football Federation and fined over $4,000 each. The players were caught breaching disciplinary rules on the way to the Copa America in Argentina, which starts on Friday. And finally in sports, WBC number one challenger Floyd Mayweather wants Manny Pacquiao in the ring, fueling speculation on whether he will ever fight the Filipino boxer. The 34-year-old American made the announcement on Tuesday as he confirmed that his first fight in a year would be against Victor Ortiz, a Mexican-American with a record of 29-2-2 with 22 knockouts on September the 17th at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. When discussing his next challenger, world champion Ortiz, he said that he can't overlook him. Do I want, do I want the Pacquiao fight? Absolutely. Absolutely. If that's, what the, if that's what the fans want, that's what I want to give the fans. But it takes one step at a time. I can't, I can't overlook Victor Ortiz. And on a different note, Space Shuttle Atlantis will launch on Friday, July the 8th at 11.26 a.m. local time from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and will be the final launch of NASA's shuttle program. NASA officials stated that special planning has been involved, as NASA will rely on Russian Soyuz capsules should the shuttle get damaged and astronauts need to be rescued. The station is a 100 billion U.S. dollar project of 16 nations 
about 220 miles above the Earth. It's currently manned by three Russians, two Americans and a Japanese astronaut. We had a very thorough review, like our previous FRRs. Uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time going over each activity that uh, is going to occur on this flight. There's some unique things that are associated with this flight. The fact that we have four crew members cuts down a little bit on some of the crew time to get things done, so we had to make some adjustments to make sure that that would all fit, and that all worked out well. And finally this evening, India, apart from being a focal point of business and trade, is also gaining popularity in the arts. Several Indian artists are receiving recognition not just from overseas, but also from art lovers in Dubai. Landscape photographer Mahesh Shantaram, who describes himself as a contrarian, uses his interpretation of public spaces, such as Indian wedding venues, to evoke a contrary image of clutter and chaos. He says that within chaos, there is a strong hidden functionality and order that characterizes the many success stories of India as a leading country. What has worked for me is to, is to always find my space in a, in a unique opportunity or a private world. So the, the world of weddings is this world that I, I live in. And I could just serve the client or I could serve the client and also take a little something for myself. So I think each of us can find, find that private world within the world and, and make art out of it. Curators of Dubai's art galleries believe that it's the right time to establish a larger setting in Dubai for the thriving art industry in the region. We pride ourselves, you know, to bring to the community as a public space an engagement with them and with our artists to kind of create a dialogue that will allow people to, you know, view on a regular basis, you know, fresh work from around here and elsewhere. And with that, let's now take a look at the local and international weather forecast for tomorrow. And before we head out, here are the top stories again. Ruler of Dubai authorizes cash injection for Emirat. Abu Dhabi government hiring more Emiratis under Crown Prince's directives. Flash floods in the Philippines kills 11. And Dubai direct trade jumps a record 34% in Q1. Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. As always, we'd love to hear your comments. You can contact us by writing to news at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04-367-2230. From the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.